Welcome back to the SNHU Esports Arena. My name is Sholi. I'm joined up here with Conair for some Overwatch for tonight. SNHU Sapphire back once again, taking the fight to the St. Clair Saints Academy team. How are we feeling about this matchup? Well, you see, both of these teams right now are 3-0, right? So undefeated. 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 We can say undefeated now. It's not two wins or one win. It's three wins. That's a big that's deal. That's a trend. Yeah, that's a trend, right? So these teams are going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe here, and I feel like we're going to see some, you know, really good play of Overwatch going on tonight. So Absolutely. I'm excited to see what is ahead for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at our maps for tonight. Let me start up uh, on Oasis. Oasis, I feel like, is always, you know, one of those maps that um, it, it's a little bit tricky. We saw on the last point or last uh, map of our last match, actually, and it it's really tricky because there's so many ways to approach that uh, center uh, control point on the third point. But um, anyways, the second map here is going to be Hollywood um, with a uh, hybrid. Hollywood is a map that we have not seen yet on stream for this semester, but Hollywood is a map that played last semester. I know in particular, Kresnik really liked to play Torbjorn on that. Mm -hmm. So he's now head, head coach. So we'll see if the if Torbjorn comes back out on that. I know he thinks it's a sleeper pick, but we'll see if the rest of the team are willing to rock that. But should be a very exciting lineup of maps for us tonight. But with Oasis in particular, I think that it's going to be really interesting to see how these teams play control because this is kind of a, a, a control map where the high ground really, really matters. Right, yeah, definitely. Um, in Oasis, I, I think getting that high ground, having that verticality in your kit too, we, we've always you know come back to this where we talk about the mobility and the meta of mobility, but um, we are going to get into game here, and um, right off the bat, we're going to see these compositions or typical Zarya, both sides here, and we already see we they have a Pharah coming from St. Clair here as they get into a scuffle here fighting for the high ground. They got a pharmacy coming out here and Grubby's gonna be able to find a first kill there on straight up Menace, drawing first blood on this round. That pharmacy could be a little bit of a trouble if SNHU aren't able to snipe that one down. Pepto, I mean, he might be able to hit his railgun shots on that, but still gonna be a little bit difficult. He's only gonna get one shot there. And at the moment, St. Clair Academy are just cleaning up this first team fight. They're gonna get control of the point right away. And I think that this kind of goes to show, I mean, this pharmacy, it, the moment it gets picked, the moment it comes out, it can be really strong. It's kind of like al almost shock value. It pops up, you're not ready for it, you're not ready to play against it, and you're not positioning for it. So when it actually gets you, it's right above you. It can be really, really punishing. But I think playing into this now, they're going to be much more aware of that. Yeah, and we're already seeing some switches coming out. We've seen um, them deal with it before with the um, uh, on Ilios with the Sombra here. Uh, and you just hack it, and they fall out of the sky kind of like that right there Pepto actually going to take a lot of space on this uh, point right now straight up men is getting a, a little bit low there but so is Apostle looking very very chipped down by Rhino yeah doesn't have quite enough charge to really finish him off though at the moment now just trying to stay alive on the point Holy Juan's going to be able to take up straight out Menace again now that Sojourn is just tearing through SNHU's backline. Grave getting hacked, Pepto is continuing to harass the backline. We'll be able to pick up, uh, we'll be able to pick up a kill there onto one of St. Clair's supports. But at this point, they are just running into SNHU's front line and taking them out. That res comes through as well, so that pick almost doesn't even matter. St. Clair are now 50% done with this point. SNHU are having a, a really tough time actually establishing presence here. Yeah, I feel like even though this map might seem a little bit more close quarters, I think Ilias definitely with the uh, Sombra there is a little bit easier to hack the um, Pharah because as we can see, the Pharah is kind of using this big ultimate is actually going to get shut down by Rhino though. Uh, and now this is his time to push the point and he's going to do so grabbing a lot of space, but not enough before Apostle takes him out along with straight up Menace. Just running right in, looked almost like maybe he didn't have a, a great target in mind to work with. And now in the overclock coming out from St. Clair, they also spent the barrage there. They spent Valkyrie. They dumped three ultimates into securing that fight with 90% for St. Clair. At the moment, SNHU, it's going to be really tough for them to actually get touch here in a second. They're going to have to really play deep for this. And the positioning is going to be really not on their side in this upcoming team fight. 
We'll see the yeah. Graviton Surge come out, and that caught the Genji as well. They will be able to get touched, but this timer is burning down the blade. It comes out trying to go in on the back line, but just getting shredded down by Apostle. He's going to find a double kill there. It's continuing to zone them out. Now, Sanichi are still contesting, but it's, it's not looking like it's going to last too long for them here. There's some really quick switches come over from SNHU, but it looks like this timer is going to burn it down, and St. Clair will establish control of the first round. Yeah, very strong start from St. Clair there. I think that not only was it the shock value that the pharmacy delivered, but it, I feel like it definitely pulled through with the damage, too. They utilized that arch in the first opening of that point there perfectly and just kind of hid behind it and used that as their cover. It, I think it was very difficult for the DPSs on Snoo to actually deal with the uh, Pharah in the sky there. The, the, the Pharah Mercy combo really does work well into characters like Sojourn that you see so often because she only has one shot to actually be able to take down half of that duo. It's not like Soldier or Ash or even Cass to an extent where you can really just you know chip away at them over time and just continue to pelt them with shots over and over and over. That's just not something that you can really do with someone like Sojourn. It's very hard to actually really shut them down, but we'll see now as we get on to our next uh, round here. St. Clair changing up things a lot. We're not going to see the Pharmacy come out. We're going to see the Genji come out as well as the Sojourn. A very similar, or a very popular team composition we're seeing come out from them. SNHU are going to be close, but going to swap out that Genji for a Soldier. So definitely a lot of frontline damage. Not really looking to try and fight the backline here. Yeah, we're seeing this rollout. Oh, Krabby is going to pick Osiren there and try to menace soon after falling to him as well. He's just running in the back line right now, taking a duel with Pepto. The lamp goes out, and he is off the map. Ooh, Pepto finds a headshot on him and takes him out. Now they have to deal with Apostle here. Boy. And they do just with a headshot just like that. Going to take him out. Apostle just in a really bad spot, getting caught out there. But SNHU actually need to clean up this team fight and be able to flip this point right now. Rhino is still pretty low at the moment. Still got to be worried about running into these supports. Pepto will be able to shut him down there. And this is mostly how we're going to see the back lines fall for St. Clair. SNHU are really going to be relying on Pepto to be able to hit those railgun shots on those vital support targets because Straight Up Manus is really going to be focused on trying to shred those frontline targets. Yeah, but they also got that um, soldier too. I feel like dishes out a lot of damage. We were talking about it earlier. I feel like they're similar characters. Sojourn is definitely better in my opinion, but we see him on this high ground here. If as long as they can control this high ground, they have a lot of damage. And Viso is going to take out Apostle there, but getting it's straight up menace actually getting traded out with the uh, Holy Wand. The Grace going to take out the lamp. Rhino is going to get Grubby off the map in Holy, Holy Juan with the Ooh. overclock. Another snipe right out of the air there. He body shot Rhino there as well. Going to flip the point back in their favor. SNHU got a pretty sizable dent into their progress, though. But for St. Clair, they did pop the overclock there. SNHU are still holding on to four ultimates in hand at the moment. They haven't built up that sound barrier yet. Straight up, that's going to get picked off pretty early. Going to delay this push for SNHU, which could really bring things into the lead for St. Clair here. They have to kind of wait here to sit back in this lobby before they can push in. And St. Clair at this point are just kind of free to build up some ult charge here. They are getting close to Nano Blade, which is going to be a really scary thing as well as that Graviton Surge. Very, very big ultimates that you really have to watch out for. But for SNHU, not having not having that sound barrier is going to make things very dangerous. Okay, the window open up. Biso driving that down as well as the tactical visor from Straight Up Menace. He goes on the flank, trying to just harass this back line now. They're just playing around this wall. Pepto coming in the overclock from a different angle. Finds a shot on the Grubby Straight Up Menace. Getting it taken out by that railgun shot. Pepto is so low, but he goes in deeper just to try and stay alive. He ends up falling. And SNHU, they are two down. Both DPS fall. St. Clair only losing one. And it looks like SNHU are just getting cleaned up at this point as they have to fall back again. St. Clair not 70%. Time is running out. Yeah, that was a devastating shutdown to that push there. They used all four of their ultimates and did not get to flip that point there. The clock is running out on Snoo here and St. Clair is just taking so much space right now. Yeah, SNHU are having a tough time actually getting out of their spawn right now. And Apostle, who's sitting around full charge, is just going to absolutely microwave anyone who decides to step just a little bit too far forward. Look how fast Osiren just gets nuked down by all of the frontline damage from St. Clair. It's such a tough position for him to be in, but he does have Sound Barrier ready. It's actually the only ultimate that SNHU have, but we're going to see the blade come out from Grubby. SNHU not able to get the contest, and that's going to be map number one going out the window, going over towards St. Clair Academy. 
Yeah, St. Clair took that one by surprise in the first round and it continued to just catch Snoo off their feet there in that second round. Um, they, I feel like what they're doing a lot, uh, you don't really see it um, as much in Overwatch 1 because you had, at least in the double shield meta, right? You had the shields to hide behind, but they are definitely using the cover provided to them by the map to their fullest extent in this, at least these two maps so far. And that's one of the biggest things about Overwatch 2 is being able to use, you know, that, that natural cover on maps because you don't have that off tank to peel for you anymore. You really have to just play around these corners, play around that because if you are caught out in the open, you're going to die so fast. Things are so much more lethal in this game. And we see that a lot with how off, uh, with how big picks really were in this, in this particular map. I, I think that it was really tough for SNHU to just get on the point because there was often times where they would try and push forward and one of them would get picked off and they'd have to back up and not commit to that push. And that just burned so much time on the clock down. Right, and they almost completely shut down that four ultimate push there with basically just a wall, right? Yeah. They, they ran around the wall with straight up menace and I think the bomb went a little bit too short to not catch them there, which would have been perfect, by the way, if straight up menace pushed them out into the open where the bomb was. But... um. It, they definitely are using that to their fullest advantage, but we are going to take another look at the maps here again real quick. And uh, next up, we are going to Hollywood. I'm excited for this. Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood's an interesting map. There's, uh, it, It's really a weird map in the current state of Overwatch 2 because this first point, you're going to see it be kind of a good sojourn point. She's really good at taking that high ground, taking the, you know, sort of pushing up really quickly. But when you look at second point Hollywood, the high ground's almost too high up for Sojourn to really play around that effectively. So we'll probably still see Sojourn, but it's going to be interesting to see how she kind of has to play around that because she doesn't really have that vertical mobility that she needs to establish high ground on the second point. And that's going to be a big point of contention on this map. And potentially we could see someone, you know, alternative characters like Hanzo, like Widowmaker coming out or like Ash, who's also a really great pick right now. Um, characters like that are really going to do great on Hollywood's second point. And I think that is going to be a big spot where the game is either won or lost. Yeah, for sure. Um, I agree. We've seen uh, the power of Sojourn on that first point, too. She so easily can play the low ground, the high ground, wherever she wants. But I think you're right. If she wants to hop down from either of those high grounds on the second point, it's going to be a little bit difficult for her to get right back up there. She's probably going to use the elevator to actually get back up there. But um, definitely, I agree. I think an Ash would be good here. But you were talking about earlier that um, Kresnik being the new yep. coach, yeah. they might run a Torbjörn. Um, what do you think? Would you say that's on defense here on Hollywood? Uh, on defense, the Torbjorn has been kind of a historical SNHU pick, just because that is a pick that you know particularly um, SNHU's coach really enjoys. But I'm interested to see if any of the players have picked that up. Like if he's really yeah. pushed the players, like you should try Torbjorn on yeah. this point because I know, I mean, he just got re-enabled and ranked a few days ago, so they've had time to practice him in in you know somewhat in their free time if they really wanted to. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and hop into game Hollywood map number two. Hopefully SNHU can find a little bit more of a foothold in this map as they try and hold off St. Clair on this first push. Yep, they're going to be on defense and I would like to see a, a Torbjorn, but um, sadly I don't think we are going to see one. He's just, can't really contest with you know the rest of the DPS in the cast right now. Um, it's a, it's such a tough role to fight for because Sojourn really dominates that that one of those DPS spots and the other DPS spot you usually see going to characters like Genji like Sombra. Um, th that's just such a a good pick right now, and a lot of teams are running it, and, and for a very good reason. It's so hard to actually contest. Oh, Siren here, I think maybe listening in for some footsteps here, trying to get some info on who's on their team. That's an interesting little strategy. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that before, um, but. They are running the monkey. It's going to be a little bit easier for them to contest this high ground. I don't think they really have any means of stopping a mid leaf here. Um, but he's going to get a lot of information out there and go around the right side here and contest this little cubby. Um, but he has the opportunity to just jump up to the high ground right now. And so is the Sojourn on St. Clair Academy. They are moving quickly into a chokehold here with Snoo. 
This is how you have to play this first point, just securing that high ground control is so big. And a big anti-nade coming out is going to hit Osiren and Rhino. They both get kept alive by that immortality field, but Menace is going to get taken out by that fair. Pepto falls as well. That's both DPS down for SNHU. And now they're just getting pushed down into the alleyways. They're getting splintered right now. Rhino completely separated from his supportive line is going to get picked off. Diso falls, just Osiren left, and he gets taken out. St. Clair might just capture this first point here and now. Yeah, and this is interesting. They're running the pharmacy again on this map, and I think that covers all of the problems we were talking about. Apostle going to go in very deep, chip out Pepto a little bit there, but his shield is running low, and Grubby just getting a little bit of poke out on the back line there of Snoo. Another thing to note is we were talking about how this extreme high ground is really tough if you don't have great vertical momentum. Even Sojourn, who's got pretty good vertical um, vertical mov movement abilities, can't really get up there too easily, which is going to be really hard for Zarya to deal with on SNHU. I think that I really do like the Winston pick from St. Clair because it allows them to just dominate this high ground as well as the pharmacy. He's able to support them up here in the sky. Whereas SNHU, you're going to see them really struggling to actually get presence on these rooftops. Now straight up Menace gets taken out. Viso trying to stay alive right here, but Grubby goes in, finds a kill. Their bubble goes down, just zoning them back off into their spawn. They're having a tough time just getting out the front door again, and we'll see in this Discord. He does get pretty much perfect information on where he is through the walls, be able to ping those out, but this Zenyatta pick is going to be much less mobile than the Lucio that he switched off of. And against this team composition, that's a little bit of a risky pick. St. Clair already halfway towards the second point right now, closing in on capping this one out. SNHU having a tough time getting out the door. Yeah, it feels like they really know their limits here, and they're able to play this kind of FFA almost game uh, play style here um, while the point is just pushing the entire time. And we're, we're seeing just how effective this pharmacy is going on the second point here. I don't know how much use it'll be in oh, no. this point, but Injustice is gonna <laughs> no. get Rhino there. That is so sad as St. Clair grab at the second point right there. They're gonna be able to push through SNHU now on last. Fortunately, Pepto's not gonna get staggered too far behind the rest of his team, but you see how forward St. Clair are establishing positions already? Yeah, it, they definitely know where to hold, and they know how far they can go up without getting caught out here. Um, as soon as we're seeing Rhino kind of push them back here, I think it's a matter of how much space they actually are able to control here, and it doesn't seem like enough against St. Clair right now. Yeah, they're having such a tough time. We're going to see the switch over to Ash. I think this is a great... Or, I mean, he's been on Ash for a little bit here, just hasn't been able to really find too much Yushids on it. And now that, you know, they're, they've, had, they've got some opportunity here to actually establish some positions. We're going to see Bob come out to try and contest the part, but this Ash is right now feeling like maybe a little bit too claustrophobic in these final spots. Bob going to be great for it. denying area, though. Grubby will go down. So will Apostle as straight-up Menace finds two kills right there. SNH should be able to push it back St. Clair. I think that's been the first unsuccessful push for St. Clair so far, the first time they've actually been pushed back. But SNHU, this is, the, I mean, they, they've they got to really just hold right here for four minutes. There's not a lot of room for error. And it's definitely doable there. Um, I I mean, they took their first kind of strike back here in this set right now. Um, but I, I feel like as much time as they can buy is perfect. And that's a lot of damage going out onto both of those players there. But Pepto's going to have to run out there. He has the Harmony Orb on him. But there comes the overclock, and he's going to have Ooh. to find that, and he does. He's looking for the Mercy now, just barely going to go short. And the rest is just kind of cleanup crew here. Oh, Siren going very deep, putting that Discord orb on Zarya, but it's there. her bubbles are gone. Pepto's going to clean up there. And, um, you know, it, it just has to come down to more fights like this, and Snoo can maybe pull back this uh, three-minute uh, push that they have left. For SNHU, it really does seem like the best opportunity they really have. I mean, th they have straight up Menace now, it, along with uh, Pepto on Sojourn. Um, these two characters, Ash and Sojourn, are really going to be great at just taking down the characters from one distance, which is so great for them, but they are really just restricted through this narrow, uh, you know, kind of choke point as to how far they can actually damage them. And the barrage comes out from Grubby, but it's not going to find too much other than just putting him right back down as Biso and Osiren team up to take him down. St. Clair now 
just stuck off to the side here, trying to push forward, trying to get around this choke point by like going through the side path here, and we're seeing SNHU, and then immediately start to pivot behind this RV, trying to take some hard cover here, and that is, like we were saying earlier, the name of the game is just trying to play around the environment so much more, because you have so much less peel. Yeah, and I feel like they're doing a good job of more people on that Mercy and Farah there, but Apostle actually going to get bursted down in his own Graviton search there. Rhino not having any bubbles left, though, is going to fall to Apostle. Wins in the long run there. Straight up Menace getting a shot on Injustice. Going to take him out. Apostle's just wreaking havoc, though, in all of Ooh. the team. Pepto is finally going to put an end to that and take out Holy Wants, barely saving Biso. Yeah, staying alive out here. Great play at the moment. Straight up Menace used that coach gun a little bit offensively there. And unfortunately, with Zarya, if you don't have a movement to really make yourself, you, to, to create distance between the two of you, she will just burn you down so fast. That's what we saw happen there. But at the moment, Befto is able to kind of find a lot of value off of these railgun shots. And he's going to have Overclock coming up in just a second. Bob is up as well for SNHU to just try and secure some space. Sync there at the moment working with no ultimate. So we see Bob come out there from Menace. Goes deep into the back line trying to harass the supports. Will get put to sleep, but Pepto's already started to wreak some havoc on the DPS. Taking down Holy Juan. Will get res. Picked right back up. But Grubby now taken out in that TNT. Finding some nice burn damage there on Holy Juan as he tries to fall back to his back line. St. Clair having a tough time just grouping up for an attack. Yeah, that TNT does a lot more than you think it would. It burns for a very long time, and it's more than a nuisance. It can end up killing you there. So I feel like in these close quarters, corridors and cubbies here, I feel like Ash is a really good pick. Yeah, that TNT it really does so much, and especially Bob as well, just denying these small rooms is so, so nice. So Siren gets picked off there by Apostles. They fly in on the back line, and Justice will go down as the overclock comes out from Pepto, trying to stay alive, trying to take down this Genji on the just barely Ooh. alive. He is able to find that final shot as soon as the deflect ends, but SNHU, they're looking like in a rough spot right now. The Transcendence comes out from Osiren to try and contest it in time, but he has to do it out of spawn. He doesn't get too much healing off it, just gets there in time to be on the cart, and he gets taken out there. Just Menace now trying to contest for as long as possible get taken out by apostle will anyone be able to touch in time it will be rhino who flies in on the wrecking ball but apostle is gonna be able to melt him down so fast he's able to hit him grubby going in with the dry blade able to take down biso as well pepto falls as a you just go down one by one this stall is looking like it's falling apart right here and st Clair barely just not shoving it in yet one meter left on here and straight up menace goes down that's gonna be all the way for st Clair three points here five seconds left on the clock but what a scary what a scary push there from St. Clair. They stalled for so long there it was just one person after another they burned it down to five seconds left I mean five seconds might like it doesn't really seem like a lot it doesn't really seem no, like it, it matters doesn't. that much you get I think it's you get 30 or a minute you get a minute back you get a minute on the, back on, the on the overtime right if you push it to three minutes here so they'll have a minute in five seconds if snoo manages to push it to all three points here but they have to do that um in you know regular time here i feel like st Clair definitely made it easy for themselves by pushing in those first two points so quickly so i'm wondering how snoo is going to roll out here um and effectively play the first two points and if they're going to be able to you know know their limits as well as st Clair did during that second point yeah, we're seeing a d very different composition come out from SNHU right away. We're seeing, we are seeing the Mercy come out from Osiren. We'll see if he actually sticks on this. He doesn't currently have a, a, a really synergistic uh, DPS to go with that. We're not seeing the Pharah come out. We're not seeing the Echo come out. But the Ash Sombra, I really do like. I think this is great here. Only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is this Zarya on the first point, because we saw how strong Monkey was. And I think especially Winston is a, a very decent pick into Zarya. It's one of the only few decent picks into Zarya because he is able to play around that bubble which can block the laser and actually mitigate that damage while still you know doing damage through it so I think that it's a really really good pick against them but we're gonna see the Zarya mirror come out here and I think they might struggle a little bit to actually take this high ground. Yeah Pepto gathering a lot of information there isn't gonna commit just yet gonna move his point up a little bit more so he'll be able to get back in the fight a little bit easier but it seems like they're pushing them off this first high ground right now and making them retreat to that backward high ground. But just as I say that, it sh goes to show just how well Sojourn and Mercy can play off of these two high grounds here. Apostle is going to go deep, buying a lot of space, and Snoo is looking pretty low right now. 
Yeah, we are going to see that switch over from the Sombra to the Sojourn. This is really good for being able to take this forward high ground. Um, but we're going to see their St. Clair just have kind of an iron grasp on it. It's going to be really hard for them to actually get pushed away from this. And Rhino is going to start taking things over towards the back alley. They might try and wrap around here to actually push through. But Beast is trying to get up to the rest of his team to support them on the high ground. While Apostle is continuing to be a thorn in the side for SNHU's offense right here. Got to be actually able to break in here in a second. Grubby might fall here, but is able to get around the corner in time. The lamp goes out as well to actually save him. Both teams lose their immortality field, and Rhino's actually going to get taken out here. Pepto's going to try and make a play here. Will be to take down Juan, but Grubby is going to trade him right back out. That is a lot of players down for SNHU. They're going to have to try and back off here as Siren gets caught out as well. And Menace getting staggered a little bit there as St. Clair do a fantastic job holding on to this, and look at their ult economy right now. Yeah, they definitely got really good ult economy. They're about to have all five ultimates up here in a second. And uh, I think Snoop really has to pull something out of the books. Just something a little bit different uh, to kind of break the defense. Almost unbreakable, it seems, from St. Clair. And there comes the Graviton Surge from both teams. See the lamp get taken out from Biso there, so they don't have immortality to rely on. But Apostle is pushing so far forward. He's going to be able to take down Menace stuck in that corner. And now Juan's just... Just picking away at this back line right now. We're going to see Osiren be so fall. It's going to look like SNHU are getting sent right back to that spawn room. They still have a minute and 50 seconds left to work with here. St. Clair, they only spent Surge there, and look at how much percentage they got off of that. Apostle's already 45% of the way to their next Surge. That is a crazy amount of percentage to gain so fast. SNHU, they will have some stuff to work with here. They will have a little bit. They won't have Surge, but they will have everything else under the sink. Right, and that overclock is going to be one of those deadly ones, one of those kickers. And we see Pepto already finding a kill there, and Grubby going in with the beat and the blade. He is going to pay, do so much damage there, push Apostle into that cubby. St. Clair, they're now three down right now as Osiren and Pepto go in on the back line. Apostle still a little bit of a problem, but now just getting melted down without his supports to back him up. And it looks like SNHU will finally break this first point hold with a minute left on the clock they're going to be able to start their secondary push here and we'll see how they fare here on attack because st Clair, you saw they had such a huge vertical advantage on this point and we're not seeing that from snhu right now we're going to see you know, that that sojourn that zarya who really are going to have trouble getting up on and controlling these roofs and I, i'm going to be interested to see how different this push looks from st Clair's, which was frankly a dominant push yeah, they're going to have to fight for this right side here to be able to contest that high ground up there with the Zarya. Play around this elevator, and I feel like the further they push it up, the easier it makes that to do. But, uh, you know, Grubby is going to just abuse Osiren back here, and I think Straight Up Menace falling to getting... S okay, every everyone, uh, everyone's dead. Everyone's, everyone's dead. dead, yeah. The surge comes out. That's caught two players there. That is so worth surge right now is such a scary tool because it will just lock you down, shut off your movement tools. It's basically a guaranteed kill if, you are, if you're actually able to isolate someone away from their team. And we'll see that happen a lot in these games because Surge is, you know, it, you can walk up on the tank completely on their own and solo Surge them, and it's probably worth it because you will likely kill them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it keeps you in place for so long there. It's such a long time to just be able to get free headshots almost. It's such a good ability. Um, but Rhino going up here, he has a surge. Will he use it on these four? It got reflected! Here? It got reflected at him and he gets nanoed and two of Snooze players are gone just like that. They are gonna have to reset and just call it a quits on this one. That is so bad for SNHU. That was such a good opportunity for them. Rhino throws out the surge, but Grubby reads it. He knows it's happening. He sends it right back at him, and we're going to see the switch off of Zarya from Rhino. Switch over to that Zarya, or, or sorry, switch over to that Winston to actually try and control a little bit more of this high ground. Try and put this Genji a little bit more on lock, because at the moment, Grubby is getting away with murder. Yeah, Grubby is doing a lot of damage for St. Clair here, and... Pepto has the overclock. He's pinging Apostle here. He wants to deal with him, but, but Grubby is just going to oh take no. out two players there with the mercy damage. And he's still going. He is still at large. He is not going to be sent to Genji Prison this time. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> he's, he's still free. He's still out there. That's the scariest thought, is that Grubby is, is not behind bars right now. <laughs> he is not. He's, he's being mercy boosted. He's being nano boosted. He's got his sword out. He's just cutting people in half out here in Hollywood. And it is such... It is so, so scary to see. SNHG, we are going to see the overclock come out. Pepto trying to take the fight up to this Mercy, but just cannot land those shots. He needs to hit Menace. He's going to get slept. He will land back with his team, though. So he will be in a decent situation. But he will get slept out of that blade, and that is going to be the real kicker. That is so, so bad for SNHU. But at the moment, they've got window open. Potentially an opportunity for them to actually make a big play here. Menace will go down, but Pepto's going to find a pick there. On to Grubby. Some opportunities for them to just get back into this at the moment. As they continue to push the cart forward, the disruptor shot comes out. Pepto's going to be able to take that Holy Wand there also finds I mean right after taking down Grubby that's both DPS down for St. Clair and they're being pushed back into their spawn at the moment it's gonna be so hard for them to actually contest this but they will push through Apostle almost has Graviton Surge we're gonna see it come out almost right away Petto gets a lock onto Grave there just trying to go in on the back layer and see the sound barrier come out from Osiren just to try and keep his team alive through that Surge Grave goes down but Petto gets traded right Ooh. back out Osiren finds the pick onto Injustice so there's no more reses coming out for St. Clair and now just tanks <laughs> tanks shooting at each other right now as Osiren if he needs to go in on the back line. He's got like a triple kill. He's killed four people so far in this team fight. He is going on a rampage right now. And SMHU are going to find their way back into this as they take the second point with a minute and a half left on the clock. Yeah, they're going to have to do this in one, if not two pushes. And it, they are looking very close to what St. Clair was. And they are not done yet. But one thing I feel like St. Clair has done a really good job of is denying Snoo from actually using their ultimates effectively. Just denying so many of them, whether it be a Genji Deflect or an Ana Sleep, they are so good at reading exactly when they're going to have their ults up. And we now we see Rhino going in very deep there. He is nanoed, but he has his ultimate. He's just going to wreak havoc here. Wait for people to go into the sight line of Pepto. Try to push people out there, get these picks. Rhino is actually going to find one himself, though. That pick will get canceled out as Grave gets picked right back up, but he's going to send her right back down. And Justice also falls. And that is both support players down for St. Clair for the time being. But there is a Nano Blade on deck, and that's something to be scared about. But Apostle gets taken out. Pepto will die to that uh, Disruptor field, but both teams now down one player. The moment Apostle gets back, maybe a little bit scary. But the Nano Blade comes out as Grubby starts to go in on the back line, takes and actually going in on a Siren, but forced to deflect, has to fall back to actually deal with this tank. And that is a huge loss of momentum right there. They, oh, they actually are aren't going to be able to kill Rhino right here. He will finally fall as Grubby finds that kill, but that Nano Blade not finding anything is two ultimates right down the drain. And Osiren is still tearing it up on the cart. And three people making it their way back here. They are going to have to play out of their mind here to win this 3v5. And Holy Juan is going to just take out straight at Menace there and be so falling to Apostle. It's just Rhino left to contest that to the overtime and the time burns out. What a tragic defeat there. So close to the finish line, but St. Clair just had such a strong first round. It, it felt so unbeatable. But SNHU, there were some points there where I was like, okay, they're, they're really just having a tough time out there. But they found some big openings. They took advantage of those, and they really almost brought it down to the wire there as they got close to the finish line. But like, Grubby just deflecting that Graviton Surge is the nastiest thing I have seen on this stream so far. Just... Absolutely, you're right. St. Clair are doing so good at denying SNHU's usage of ultimates. You yep. cannot you cannot just be like, oh, I see a whole team, I'm going to ult them. Because yeah. you have to think twice about every single play that you make as St. Clair. If, if, if you leave the slightest opening, they will punish it, they will exploit it, and they will make you regret hitting that Q button in the first place. Right, and these Overwatch players here, I feel like they have like just some kind of spidey sense going on. They know exactly when people have their ult charge built. And it's something that I can never really do, but they have it down on point, especially St. Clair here. So um, we are going to take a look at the maps, our upcoming maps. I'm excited to see what's coming up next because we've had a really great set so far. Oasis, St. Clair did absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. on. But our second map there, Hollywood, that was really close. That, w that was a really close set right there. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what is coming up next. It will be Rialto Escort map coming up. We have not seen Rialto yet, once again, this semester. But it is a map that we've seen a lot of in Overwatch 1. So, as always, I'm interested to see exactly how different these maps play. Yeah, I, I would kind of like to see um, more tanks played really here on this map. But I know in my heart it's just going to be Zarya. But 
how much would I just love to see like a um, Aritza or something on this map? I feel like would be pretty cool. But um, you also have to take into account that this map also has kind of that verticality, not really that badly. But on this first point here, I feel like you could run something a little bit more straightforward and just kind of, you know, rush down the enemy team kind of play style. There is that the, uh, there is a scary high ground hold right on this first point like you mentioned and usually we would see like we, we would see like a Reinhardt Sigma or like some sort of double shield composition Diva Sigma even that usually Sigma is in there somewhere just to hold on to that high ground really interesting yeah. if that continues because Sigma He's definitely a playable tank on some maps. He's not as popular as he was in Overwatch 1. You still see him on maps like Circuit Royale. But in this map in particular, I want to see if he still gets played. So let's go ahead and hop into Rialto. Map number three, set point for St. Clair. But SNHU hopefully looking to try and punch back up and take the fight back to St. Clair. This is these first two rounds. They've just been getting closer and closer. So we'll see how Rialto plays out here. This is interesting. We're going to see the pharmacy coming out from St. Clair. Um, I don't, Kiriko? but, Kiriko? and may, maybe, maybe the Kiriko from Viso, that'd be pretty cool. Does, does Viso stick it? Does he stay on the Kiriko? I don't know. I think this, this might be the first week Kiriko is playable in NECC. So this is, this is some, some uncharted territory here. Kiriko is not even playable yet in, er, in Overwatch League, will be, I believe in a few days, but this is, no one really knows exactly how Kiriko is in organized play, so this will be interesting to see what Biso is willing to do with it. If he does stick to it, we do see the Mercy come out from Osiren. Let me try and damage boost straight up Menace here as they come out of the gates. We're not seeing that Sigma, like I mentioned. We're going to see uh, two Winstons kind of mirroring off, just looking to try and play around this high ground, try and play a little bit of, of tug of war here, a little bit of give and take here. And we're actually going to see the Widowmaker stay. I expected the, that to get swapped off of the moment spawn doors open. You know, see if you get an opening pick, but Straight Menace is staying on it. Going to play almost a double sniper composition here. Yeah, they. S I think that this Widowmaker is kind of uh, designed to deal with the pharmacy here. It's going to be really good at doing that, and so is Pept over there, as we saw. As long as he has, as he has that charge there, he's going to be able to take him out there. But Rhino going to take out Grace, but fall shortly after getting rezzed, actually. Is he going to go in for Juan? He is so low on health, and now he's so out of position, waiting for his jump to come back. Grubby will be able to sure, will be sure to punish him for that one. We see Biso also get taken out there. We see him swap off of the Kiriko. Sadly, not going to work here. Not going to... Not going to stake the game on that pick. Going to swap off to Ana, see if they can get some Nano Monkeys rolling. And Menace also going to swap on over to Hanzo. Yeah, that is definitely... I, I like the pick a lot because, you know, he's my boy, right? I like Hanzo. Of course. But um, it's interesting into the pharmacy. I'm wondering if they're going to try to read them, like, switching off from the Widowmaker, maybe? Um, but definitely Hanzo has that damage Ooh. output, but Rhino is going to get caught out there by Holy Juan. We're seeing a little bit of the Sojourn Winston matchup here and, and how bad it can kind of feel. We've seen both both Pepto and Holy Juan just the moment they get the chance to, to just shoot at Winston when, when he doesn't have his bubble up, he just gets shredded. He takes so much damage from that primary fire and the railgun shot comes out and, and just if you're able to hit the headshot on that, and you probably can because Winston's head is just so big, it is so rough to actually play into. And you really got to be careful about when you're kind of in that soldier in sight line, which is oftentimes. Right, yeah. And I agree. I think Winston, without his bubble, is one of the weaker kind of tanks. He's a little bit less durable there. Um, but definitely, he's still able to play around this cover here and jump around with his leap there right onto Graves. And uh, we see Apostle here. He is nanoed, and he's just going to melt Snoo right now. He has Actually, eight health. Falling to eight health there. Going to get the headshot, Pepto. But it's not going to be enough. He he got slept there. He was he was he got nanoed. He jumped in. He got slept, and someone woke him up on SNHU, and he just uh, you know tore into their backline at that point. But to the rest of St. Clair, I mean, they were still just continuing to go. And we saw both the Valkyrie and the Overclock go out, and that's two ultimates that go down here. This seems like a really hard push to actually get through here on this first point. Uh, SNH is having a really, really tough time, actually. It, it almost feels kind of deathmatchy at the moment here. We're going to see Apostle pop Primal Rage. Probably going to be able to kill Menace here as he shoves him into a wall. Oh, Pepto Ooh. finds the shot on the Grubby there with the Overclock. Viso is going to get res, but now he's going to worry about a very angry monkey shoving him into the canals. 
yeah, Apostle just time and time again just dealing so much with Snoo. I feel like he can he can just take on the entire cast of Snoo all at once here. Um, but they are definitely doing a really good job of holding this first point here in this high ground that we were talking about in the beginning of the game. Pepto switching to that tracer there. Grubby is going to try to stop him from uh, uh, getting into the back line of St. Clair. A good call from Grubby to watch out for that as he saw the tracer pick, knew that she was probably going to try and go onto the flank here. Pepto now tries to just get wrapped around the team, try and get into a situation where they can really try and play for the flank, but the entire team is just collapsing on him at the moment. And SNHU now they have to try and push the cart. They've got four seconds left on the clock and have to go down to overtime. And Grubby barely staying alive, but Beast will be the one to take him down. That sniper finally coming in, used to take down that fair. We'll keep the rest of SNHU's back line alive as well. They finally get an opportunity to actually push this cart up, and we'll see if they can take this first checkpoint. It looks like St. Clair are mostly grouped up around there. Yeah, it, they're kind of waiting here. I feel like this is a good point to also hold there. You can play around that bridge cover there. Um, and oh my god, Straight Up Man is just taking so much damage from the damage boost of Grubby, but he's going to get slept there right on the point. Will they be able to deal with him before he wakes up? And then they're just shredding through the rest of Snoo while they deal with that, and they push him off the point, not letting him capture that first point in round one. Injustice got two kills there on the cart. Yeah. The, the the mercy got two kills there on the cart. They have been going crazy with that pistol. I think they I think they have three kills so far on that pistol. Yeah, I think uh, so. I think the on Hollywood they got one kill and two that round. Yeah, yeah. that that mercy is really really doing a lot of damage out there. Yeah, more so than you'd hope, and definitely. Uh, see, seeing that come out is a little bit demoralizing for sure. So it's definitely a little bit of a mental game kind of in action here. Got to try and stabilize things here because SNHU don't have a lot of room to actually hold here. They've got to stop St. Clair from getting that far. That is that is just before the first checkpoint here. This is really uh, you know one of these one of these maps where the moment you lose the first team fight here on this first hold, you kind of get close to losing the first checkpoint, and so. We, we saw Sinclair, they never really fully lost that team fight. They, they you know, players would die, but they would just come back and, or it, you know, they would go even at most and kind of force SNHU back to the spawn so they wouldn't waste too much more time. And for St. Clair, really, really solid hold, a really great job of not, you know, fully getting wiped out at any point there. They were just consistently hanging on. And that's why it looks so, like, team deathmatchy in that first round. Yeah, St. Clair does not have a lot of ground they have to cover here to be able to capture this point. And I feel like they could play it really, really aggressively. <laughs> um, we're looking at a Bastion and a Torbjorn pick at the same time here uh, coming from St. Clair. I don't know if they're going to run it, and it seems like they stuck it. <laughs> they are out of the spawn point. They're just going to play a little bit, uh, little bit ballsy. I mean, they just got re-enabled, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not get in there and try try and see how it works? They've got a little bit of leeway to actually work with here. Petto is going to be able to take down Apostle. They're trying to find some more shots on Holy Juan, but he's got an entire team wrapping around him. He will be able to take out Injustice as he goes for that res, but now just taking some harassment from that turret will be forced to fall back. But SNH, you were doing a great job so far just holding on straight at Menace, finding that kill on the Grubby, taking down Juan's turret as well as they force them back completely. St. Clair do get the cart up a little bit, but still not a lot of room for them to work with. And they immediately switch off of those two picks. It did manage them to get around this corner here. Um, but Grubby is going to contest that high ground there right into Rhino's face. He's taking a lot of damage from Pepto, however. Pepto without his slide. He's in a weird spot right now. Grubby's trying to get up on him here, but he gets around the corner. And now Rhino is here to push them back. But St. Clair continuing to push the cart forward as Rhino tries to go in to harass the back line here, trying to take down these supports, but now the rest of the team coming on forward here. Menace comes be on the Cassidy in this round, just trying to get that consistent damage out. Very much a comfort pick kind of coming out here, but Rhino going in, getting this bubble down. Both bubbles down from both Winstons, but both teams just being forced back here, kind of just waiting for a good opportunity, waiting for a good pick to really come out before they commit to anything totally. Yeah, they definitely need that pick to be able to get around this corner here. It's a very hard corner to move around. I feel like most of the last point was played around this same corner here. It's really easy to hold here. And um, we're seeing the monkey duel come out here in this this alleyway, but Rhino is slept, not going to be able to contest anymore. Apostle taking up straight up Menace as his tank is just slept still. 
Rhino's just straight up snoozing right now, and he's gonna be finally be able to get his his hands back on the controller there, but he just immediately gets taken out as one finds that headshot that he needs. Pencil gonna pop the overclock here, but the Primal Rage comes out, and he is in such a bad spot right now, up against the wall, trying to do some damage here, but St. Clair are gonna be the ones to push it in all the way and finish out this set of very clean set from them. Really, really nicely played. Yeah, I they just did such a good job of, um, I feel like, alt economy and usage, and also denying Snoo uh, their playmaker ult, right? Oh, yeah. Like, the ones that would have hit four people, they're like, I know you're aiming for That's a bait. We put four people there on purpose, right? <laughs> um, but definitely very well played there from St. Clair and Snoo as well. Well fought for both undefeated teams, right? I feel like it was a pretty close uh, set overall, and um, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe and, you know, showed us their best. I mean, both of these teams, like you said, were undefeated. They had the exact same map record. They were both 9-3 and three in terms of maps, maps they picked up and maps they dropped. So these teams were neck and neck, the exact same scoreline, but St. Clair, man, they look scary out there. <laughs> yeah, that was a did. crazy good performance for them. Um, really, really nicely done. Thank you also to our players for coming out and giving us a great show tonight as well. We wouldn't have any of this without them. But that's all for us tonight. If you want more, you can check out our Twitter at slash or at SNHU Esports. You'll find all sorts of clips, match updates, as well as anything going on in the arena, events, anything like that is all there. As well as our Discord just had a big overhaul on our Discord. Like actually yesterday or two days ago, so recent. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's slash SNHU Esports. You'll find everything there. Talk with the varsity players, learn about all of our events, as well as everything that was on our Twitter also be on there. So be sure to check that out and get involved in the community in and around the arena because it's really, really great. But once again, that's all for us tonight. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with Rocket League. We'll see you then. Enjoy the rest of your night. Trying to take out some lamb. Rhino is going to get Grubby off the map and rolling fully on with the Ooh. overclock. The team Pepto is finally going to put an end to that and take out Holy Wands. Flexed at him and he gets nanoed and two of Snoo's players are gone just like that. Pepto is going to find a pick there onto Grubby. Some opportunities for them to just get back into this at the moment as they continue to push the cart forward. The distracted shot comes out as Pepto is going to be able to take that Holy Wand there. More res is coming out for St. Clair. And now this tanks, <laughs> tanks shooting at each other right now as a siren. If these go in on the back line, he's got a, like a triple kill. He's and uh, we see Apostle here. He is nanoed and he's just going to melt Snoo right now. He has eight health. With here, Pepto is going to be able to take down Apostle. They're trying to find some more shots on Holy Wand, but he's got an entire team wrapping around him. He will be able to take out. Trying to take out the Lamp Rhino. <laughs>